Hey, this is Molly Cox, tight end for the Indianapolis Colts, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in! Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, back with you Thursday, March 18th. Mo Alley Cox bringing <laughs> us into this episode of the show. Gigantor. Second round Tinder, Mo Alley Cox. Some free agents still waiting for gigantor size offers. I'm not sure when the shoe's going to drop on these wide receivers. Who Kenny knows? Galladay unsigned, Juju unsigned, Curtis Samuel unsigned, Will Fuller. It's, I've got I got more too. Antonio Brown, T. Y. Hilton. Man. Yeah, it's not a good year to be looking for a lot of money. Well, well you know who is signed. I say the the <laughs> you you're waiting for the shoe to drop. <laughs> Meanwhile, the uh, the toddler shoe did drop. Are you referring to what is it? A hundred time Pro Bowler, uh, <laughs> age. A.J. Green. A.J. Green, who is now on the Arizona Cardinals, if you did not hear, he signed a one-year deal. I think, Andy, A.J. Green is like your – is Jurassic Park now. Where, what do you mean? Well, where I – So much nostalgia. Yeah. So much like, belief in how good it was. Like when you – you lived a lot of your life believing that Jurassic Park had won <laughs> – it's like swept the awards. Right. The which Academy I, Awards. That is true, right, Brooks? <laughs> Isn't that the – Oh, yeah. yeah. Wait, Andy, A.J. Green first ballot – would he be a first ballot Hall of Famer? Of course he is. He, well, that, he already is. Look, I don't like the analogy because that insinuates Jurassic Park is not still great. That's, oh, yeah, that, oh. Is, that, that is the big problem with the <laughs> Jurassic Park analogy here. Because A.J. Green is aged day green. Okay. Aged, <laughs> aged yeah, gray? He, aged and gray? Yeah. he's. Uh, look, I, I know people are waiting for my reaction because of uh, last year. <laughs> last year's uh, look, I'm more excited about the Cardinals picking up a Pro Bowl center in Rodney Hudson you don't have to hold back but I look Andy was very excited when the news came through was I? oh yeah you were, the, yes. right when it came out yes. you were like yes yes we gotta go to the we've got the film on it you I'm were not sure I was that excited you were ecstatic. excited Jason and I sat back and went huh well that's where I'm at huh. now I'm at the hunt phase but look okay. here's, here's what I I tweeted and here's what I believe if A.J. Green has any game left. Sure. It is best suited in a non-number one role, which is what he will find himself in in Arizona with a good quarterback and a good offense. If you, uh, you know, he's going to start on the outside opposite DeAndre Hopkins. It was a problem for Hopkins at times last year not to have somebody of any uh, capability threatening on the other side. I, I say what you will about A.J. Green and where he's at. Still had 104 targets. Still had some of the most uh, uncatchable targets in football. Not a lot of separation. You can't really make a metric argument as to why A.J. Green is still good. Other than the fact that, you know, this is a renowned, what you time. would say drafted to be great, but a player with the long history of being successful. He's still a big player. We talked a little bit about Des Bryant and the fact that you're still a red zone threat when you're a certain size and not being the number one that a team has to lock down is going to make a difference on this team. Yeah, it it's certainly – it could work. For fantasy-wise, I'm not looking at it, A.J. Green going, oh, let's get him. What's, you know? What sucks is, like, if you went back and – if if we were here, but it was 2018, and you had said that DeAndre Hopkins and A.J. Green are on the same team, people would lose their minds. Yeah. I mean, David Johnson and Mark Ingram on the same team. <laughs> exactly. Uh, this is how it works. Eventually, they have to combine forces to get up to a certain level. But uh, So that's one of many pieces of free agent news that we're going to talk about on today's show. Uh, thank you both for holding down the episode on Tuesday. It was a great one. Uh, I was telling you, and Jake, Ooh. I'm sorry. I didn't give Jake Riz any, credit, any credit at all because um, he didn't say a lot. He no, didn't have a lot of commentary other than pro bears biases, which we never. I mean, the last thing we would have is biases <laughs> yeah, towards a certain team. Of course. 
Uh, but it's hard listening to the episode when big things are happening in free agency and wanting to weigh in while I'm listening and not having the right to do so. Well, th thankfully for you, then, the really big stuff, they waited for it to start happening until now. Yeah, and you know what? The honest truth is, is this episode's being recorded late Wednesday. News is breaking every minute of every day, and some of those wide receivers I just listed off could have new homes. Hopefully now, they do. Would you rather have had Arizona? I'm curious. Would you rather have had us pick up T.Y. Hilton at this stage in his career or A.J. Green? I think Hilton. I would go Hilton, but I would prefer neither. <laughs> <laughs> neither? Um, uh, that's, that's, that's where you are concerned. That's you're you're my not concerned about insulting A.J. Green or T.Y. Hilton. No way. It's Wait, did I say is neither? It I, neither I or is it neither? <laughs> well, is it either or either? Give me Marvin Jones and the deal he got, but we'll talk about that yep. and all the free agents. Yeah, there's so much to talk about. Movement. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. Um, you can find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Get all of our content over there. You can watch our reactions to various bits of news this off season. Please check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com as well as the UDK Plus if you want Dynasty Pass access. That content is available now. Uh, it's also updating immediately. Like when this news breaks, uh, the, the, the we team We lock pages some of our team members in a room and they're responsible to keep that thing updated That's right don't let them out don't let them out 24 7 kyle is just there's uh we don't condition the room um he works any, he works best when he's just covered in sweat yeah <laughs> so, so that's what we do uh check that out at ultimate twitter at the ff ballers before we get into all the free agent news let's do some buy sell Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right. Oh. Adam Thielen, is he a top 10 wide receiver in 2021? Buy or sell, top 10 in 2021? That's a that's quick a, sell for me. Uh, yeah, top 10 is a – that's a high bar. Where would we have to move that bar, though, so it's not a quick sell? 15? Well, we did – that would be a good threshold because we just did a – what was it, Godwin and – who was the other name we just did for top 15? Uh, Allen Robinson. So we did Godwin and Allen Robinson. Mike, it was the episode you were gone. Mm. Uh, I remember it. Adam Thielen, top 15. I will sell that. <sighs> so he has been top 10 through the last four years. Last year he – uh, 14 he, he, touchdowns. He touched down his way to being a top 10 guy, but it's a good quality to have. Yeah. Well, being able he, to he touch had, down. he had never really done that for us, but he had also never played without Stefan Diggs. <laughs> but now you have you Justin Jefferson. This? Wait, is AJ Green oh, on our desk? Do you see goodness. this? If Brooks put a little AJ Green next to me on the desk. Oh, no, there's, he's I knew I was the, feeling older today. He's in the right spot. <laughs> nice. Uh, but I mean, he's still had over a hundred targets in, in only 15 games. I think Adam Thielen still has ability, but top 15, I mean, that line is going to be very, very close. But Well, look, I, for, for fantasy purposes, I'm going to sell this because I, I still think Adam Thielen is great. I don't, nothing that I saw on films that he lost anything. And the reason that he had 14 touchdowns last year, he was unguardable near the goal line. I mean, it was like an automatic. If you got down there and you have him run a, some of his little fancy routes, he's wide open to catch a ball. It, it was fantastic. Oh, so fancy. Um, but the reality is he's, he's a guy who's never hit double digit touchdowns in his career before this season. He had 14 touchdowns. So it's likely to regress there. Didn't hit a thousand yards a night. I think that this is a, a high bar, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell the, the top 15. For what it's worth, when we debated Godwin and Allen Robinson, they had both tied at wide receiver 15 in points per game, which was like 13.7 last year. So it, it'll be close for Thielen because of how involved he is in this offense. Obviously, Jefferson we have, I imagine, higher next year. So, if he, But it could be sneaky. But if you're not buying him as a, as a top 15, is he, a, is he a strong wide receiver too, though? Yes. yes. Oh, yes. man. I will love him okay. in the draft season because what 
Justin Jefferson is going to do to his, you know, his age combined with Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen will be a value this next year in drafts. He will not be drafted in the top 15, no way. So then top 15 is, is kind of inconsequential because if you're talking he finishes 16 to 23, then you're still going to be very happy. So you're, you, while you're, you're not as bullish on Adam Thielen as we once were, you're still into the idea of him being on your fantasy team. Yeah, yeah, because he's going to be a lot more affordable this year, okay. this season. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's probably why Brooks put the line at top 10 because he's been top 10 three out of four years, and that is not a fair expectation for him moving forward. All right, that was Buy or Sell from our friends at Pristine Auction. Use the code BALLERS over there. You get 10 bucks towards your first sports memorabilia purchase. Uh, I almost bought myself a Larry Fitzgerald rookie card. A little PSA 10 Larry Ooh. Fitzgerald rookie card. Uh, check out all of their sports memorabilia at pristineauction.com. We're kind of skipping the news section because it's all, it's all free news. agent news, and we'll get right into it. Free agent frenzy. All right. We, we, Kenny G doesn't have a home yet, does he, Brooks? Nah. No one? Mm. How about now? Doesn't it? I think you mentioned it on Tuesday. It feels really inevitable to me that he becomes a New York Giant. Like that's I've seen where I think Kenny lot. Galladay is just going to end up. Even after they already in free agency signed a top 10 NFL draft pick at wide receiver. Are you kidding me? They've already found their solution. Who was the uh, – oh, was it John Ross? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. it, was, it was John Ross. Uh, I saw – that it was a one-year deal, right? For it's nothing. Like a couple million dollars? Yep. Yeah, I, when I saw that deal, I almost felt sad for John Ross. I felt sad for me because, <laughs> uh, well, one, I'm a little selfish. But more importantly, Didn't my you? dynasty oh, roster. Man. Oh, I remember that trade. Has. Oh, that's. I forgot. No, we can't talk about it now. Back then, the trade made sense. Did now it? the trade that's, is. That's how trades work. Now the trade is a nightmare of a disaster. Why don't you for read me. that one out? All right. So, and we made this trade, I believe, on air. I, I think it was the foot cast, but. It's pretty close, yeah. Um, I traded <laughs> a very young Mark Andrews mm -hmm. for a very young John Ross. And I do not have control of the soundboard, <laughs> but Andy does. <laughs> Dynasty trades are great, man. They're, yeah, they're funny. When you look back, we we log all of our dynasty trades in our our main league, and you look back, and there's just some ridiculous trades that were all logical in the moment. Mm -hmm. But I was I was sad because I did have hope as one of the fastest guys in the NFL, top ten draft capital, that some stupid team would pay up and give him a long term shot. It wasn't the season to hit the free agent market, but. The Giants paid down for him. Yeah. I don't think that this seasonality has it's anything totally to do with It's totally because of <laughs> like the salary cap. If the salary cap was big, they'd be paying for John oh. Ross. All that production. John yeah. Ross or A.J. Green? John Ross. Oh, come on. I would, I'm would. i not even joking. I know you're not joking. I would take John Ross Is it, it, and hope. If you're wanting to stretch the field, oh, sure. it's not going to be A.J. Green. <laughs> Hasn't been John Ross either. Uh, all right, free agent frenzy time. I listened to you fine gentlemen break down your Johnu Smith analysis, and the Patriots went out and signed another tight cool. end, Hunter Henry. I uh, three year, thirty seven million dollar deal. I mean, Johnu Smith, Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne, now Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry has never surpassed 700 receiving yards. John, who's never surpassed 450. I don't we believe can't Aguilar have nice has, things at tight end. I don't <laughs> believe Aguilar's gotten to 900 before, um, and Bourne obviously is is has not done a lot. The Patriots are better, and all of these individual players are are worse. It, this is a terrible fantasy situation for everyone not named Cam Newton. Uh, I think it's terrible for Hunter Henry. Terrible for John U. Smith. Terrible for everybody. It, it, well, so it is, let, uh, and I, I'm not going to disagree. Of I, I don't want Johnu now. Like I won't, I'm not going to take the chance. Hunter Henry. The comparisons are right in front of you. Of Bill Belichick looks like he's trying to recapture the magic of of Gronk and Hernandez. But and, and I'm with you guys for this year. While it's Cam, I'm not very interested. But Dynasty, they're going to get a quarterback. Well, they're going to take a shot anyways. I don't know if it'll it'll work out, but 
They will likely draft a quarterback. There's whispers of them moving up in this year's draft to try and get a guy. Uh, maybe someone drops. Maybe uh, – uh, who's the kid out of Florida? Uh, Trask? Oh, yeah. I mean, Trask. So there are options. So, like, thinking longer term, are you completely out on the possibility of Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith? Yes. Yeah, I, okay. I, I am, I am it's as just well. Ter it's terrible because you're just taking away – their ceilings. When you share the field, when you go in a situation now, yeah, sure, Cam Newton. Maybe this was all a bunch of moves to make themselves attractive to a quarterback, even a free agent type of situation next year or a trade. Like you have to have pieces that make a quarterback want to come and play for you that's not named Cam Newton. But you you looked at Henry and you looked at Johnu and you said, if they got this kind of money this offseason, you wanted them to be the guy. Sure. It, it it stinks for fantasy purposes, uh, but I am going to, I'm going to trust what Belichick is doing. Why? Uh, yeah. Uh, why? Yeah. Why? Uh, We've been saying that for years and years and years with all these. Any? I'm I'm not talking for. I'm not excited for fantasy. I'm saying. I, I sorry. I'll, let me phrase it. Okay. The, I thought you meant. No, the Patriots. I think the Patriots are going to be way better. Yes. Uh, like they're they're building their team where it's a defensive team. And they have they're gonna have all of the They're gonna be able to run have, twelve personnel really well. They're they're going to win games. I thought you were yes. talking for fantasy. No, no, no. For fantasy I'm not super excited, but I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna completely bury uh uh Hunter and Janu for three years down the road. Did did Travis Kelsey's ADP just go up one more spot into the first round? <laughs> yes. Because yes. it's like these were two hundred percent. These were two more options of like all right, maybe we'll have you know a good high contract, high value contract, and a good landing spot for these two guys, and have two more legitimate fantasy tight end options. And both of them were taken out well, of the knees. So look, look, you, Johnny Smith was you know some would argue Ferkser was the number one tight end. I was going to say Johnny opened up a spot, but Johnny had a situation. Jason said it on the last show. Great quarterback in Ryan Tannehill, featured in the offense, still wasn't a tight end you wanted to start every week. Hunter Henry had a, a best-of-all-time rookie season from his quarterback in Los Angeles, still didn't want to start Hunter Henry every single week. I'm just disappointed for the tight end landscape that we always hope expands and does not contract, and this felt like, oh, oh, you know. Because well, we're tough. all insane. Because it's, it's the tight end position is always the same. And I, and they're not Gronk and Hernandez. No one, no. no one will ever be that combination on the field again, and we will project them onto every tight end New, that wears a New England uniform for years. So, Hunter Henry or Johnny? Let me just Johnny. throw that out there. Johnny. Easily Johnny. I would probably go Hunter Henry just because, for fantasy purposes, I, I think Johnny will be blocking more than Hunter Henry. It'll be – it's funny. If you had both on your team, which you wouldn't necessarily want to have – it's going to be tough to know when to play who and how. Yeah, but Janu is actually athletic. Uh, I, I really liked a good friend of the show, J.J. Zacharyson, did a, a study on breakout tight ends. Athleticism matters at the tight end position. We know that other p other positions can get away without that you don't have to be an elite top tier athlete. But tight ends who break out, it matters. Like look at Logan Thomas. I, I get it. He wasn't you know a top three guy. But he was he was he was usable for fantasy football. He he broke out. Uh, he was he was he's a top tier athlete. And B John who was clearly Bill Belichick's number one priority in that's fair in, that's the, fair. in free agency. If that thing was signed before they had done anything, that is true. Nelson so, Aguilar was a priority, and so was Kendrick Bourne. So it'll yeah, be but interesting. I'm, but we're to talking see. about tight ends. Yeah, no, so. I get it. Before we move, Look, when you need to fight oh. about some tight ends. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Before we move into uh, more of the free agent news, we want to thank Fight Camp for sponsoring today's show. They're bringing the boxing gym right to your home with a mix of cardio and conditioning for a full body workout. Fellas, my Fight Camp gear is at my house right now. I am so psyched to set this thing up. Nice. I'm excited to hit the bag. I'm really excited because I know that that I can get my kids involved with this. Like we, we've been trapped inside. Fight Camp is a safe workout for your kids because I don't have to worry about them hurting themselves with heavy weights. You just strap the, the gloves on and let them go to town. 
Uh, it comes Fight Camp comes with all the gear you need to box at home. But you got the freestanding punching bag, boxing gloves, quick hand wraps, and their unique punch tracking sensors show real time progress and stats on any iOS uh, iOS device. They look, this new tech that's tracking your punch speed. You track uh, the the speed, the volume, the output. When you're beating up on a bag, I want to know that that you bag hot is stats. I, I want to know that that bag is beat. I don't know that they could track mine. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're, you're, be like you're breaking the smoke. system. Uh, if so, if you want to check this out, <laughs> blam blam. Uh, and right now, Fight Camp is offering financing, so you can pay over 24 months and get your new gym right now. Fight Camp offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. That's right. Give Fight Camp a try, and within 30 days, if you don't love it, send it back. You're going to get a refund. Fight Camp is the new way to work out at home, make a change, and join the community that teaches you the art of boxing while following the most intense workouts that are as quick as 15 minutes. To get free shipping on Fight Camp, just go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. Joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. All right, I'm not moving on. We're going to stay on Bill Belichick for a second. Okay. I would say that th it's interesting that he signed two tight ends because it hasn't – like I know – I think he's a great coach. And obviously people that want to just say Tom Brady was the whole reason and he goes on and he wins a title and Bill mm -hmm. Belichick sucks. Right. It hasn't all gone well for Bill, though, in terms of the way he's handled the draft and the way he's handled these picks. Bill but, has sucked you know, in the draft. Like Sony yes. Michelle over Nick Chubb. Yes. Was that a good draft pick? I 100% will will concede that Belichick in the draft, that is his Achilles heel. He hasn't even but, been able to pick up tight ends in the draft that we think are going to right. play that role. But Bill Belichick evaluating NFL players when they're already in the league, he has done very well at at making that happen. Grabbing and, and a Wes Welker. Rec recognizing talent that is not being utilized properly and then maximizing those players. We'll see if Cam Newton is the quarterback again this year or not, too. Yeah. Because that that he, situation, he, he would did, he could be the fool in that one. He did give up a second rounder for Muhammad Sanu. Yeah, just he did. as a reminder. Sure, it's been a, a rougher run. Uh, yeah, in terms of personnel and in, in the but shows I, on the field, I do think uh, uh, their defensive moves have been great. Matthew Judon in free agency, they're they're going to be a very solid team, and unfortunately, that means. It, worse things for fantasy because their defense is going to be so good mm -hmm. that the, their offense can run the ball with cam and it's probably going to be yeah i we'll it sounds like they want a running back yeah yeah they've been uh kicking the tires on chris carson all, chris carson and leonard fournette yeah it's best laid plans i mean you got to have a quarterback that doesn't put your defense in a horrible position it happened a lot last year Jameis Winston, a one-year, $12 million contract. Sean Payton says that Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston will compete. Yep, they Speaking will. Speaking of quarterbacks getting... putting their defense in bad positions, Jameis Winston. Yeah, I think that, that was when he couldn't see, Jason. He's oh. got, he could see now. LASIK. D you know, he got the LASIK before the 30 interception season. Mike. No, no, no. It was after. after, but it still wasn't good enough to beat out Taysom Hill when Drew Brees uh, went down to injury. It was good enough for that one bomb touchdown, though. I don't even I don't remember what game it was, but I remember Jameis came in and threw like a fifty yarder. For fantasy purposes, we want Jameis Winston to win the job, unless you're talking about Taysom Hill specifically, right? Yeah, like he's a good he'll be a good fantasy quarterback for your team, but Winston represents I think a better foundation for somebody like Michael Thomas, um, in the offense and Alvin Kamara because and and that's Adam it for Troutman. Now. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Mike has taken a real strong Mike centered approach to this show lately. Have you noticed that? Yeah. The AJ Dillon talk, the, the Wait, Adam do you have Troutman Adam talk. Troutman? Oh, he absolutely has Adam oh, Troutman. Do I okay. have I didn't, Adam Troutman? I didn't Mike, realize. Okay. If Mike talks okay. about him, just check the Dynasty roster. If you want to know what the show is going to be about the <laughs> remainder of the show, we'll screenshot his Dynasty roster. Yeah. Um, but they'll be adding pieces on the offensive side. These teams. I think one thing we've noticed with the juggling that even Kansas City's done on their offensive line, who, by the way, Kansas City was in on Trent Williams, who signed a long-term deal in San Francisco. Look, we Kansas City, oh, they're in so much cap trouble. They lose their tackles. Oh, no. And then they go out and they sign, a, uh, you know, high, two, almost two high-priced offensive linemen. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. These teams apparently can give 100-year contracts and it, void the back half of these deals and move money around. I agree completely. 
with what you're saying all the time. We brought this up on the first free agency show. It used to be when, or when we, on the prediction show, it used to always be, I look at who has cap room and then assign, but it doesn't really matter. The one exception I do think is the saints. They are so they they did so many things already and juggled so many hoops just to get to where they are actually. They juggled some hoops, Mike. Un, under, yeah, I mean. They, could, they didn't jump through the hoops. No. Well, that's that's they amateur juggled, hour. They juggled the hoops, then they jumped through them. You can juggle hoops. Yeah, you can juggle hoops. It's a lot easier a lot easier to jump through a hoop than to juggle a hoop. So depends this was on, really difficult work. The depends on the size of the hoop. They're full hulas, Mike. <laughs> full, full, that's a full hula. That's a, don't, go, <laughs> don't go full hula. Uh, For fantasy purposes here, Jameis Winston, Taysom Hill, um, you uh, genuinely, I believe that Taysom Hill will be the starter. And I believe that just based upon the fact that both of these guys were here and had the chance to compete to start, and they started Taysom Hill. I don't see why. I just I can't wrap my head. And they were successful head. with Taysom. Hill. Right. I can't wrap my head around the the one rationale. Of the players, one of the players was, had already been on the team for a while. Jameis Winston was a was a new addition. The off season was cut very very short because of COVID. That I I think that that played into it. That Taysom Hill just knew the offense better than Jameis at that point. Yeah, and we'll see what happens. I mean, they're both being paid yeah. enough to have that role, and. I, I think that the passing volume is higher with Jameis Winston on the field. Total pass, passing volume, which is what you'd want for the receiving options. Otherwise, Taysom Hill's a viable starter. Yep. Uh, two one, two one-year, ten million dollar contracts went out to two quarterbacks. Oh, baby. Washington and, yes. and the Bears. They both picked up a quarterback. They both paid ten million dollars for them. Washington picked up Ryan Fitzpatrick. Oh, and, yes. And the Bears signed Andy. Yes, Dal Andy Dalton. Yes, Ryan. The NFL is better when you are playing. It is. So is Terry McLaurin. So is Terry McLaurin. What is it? I think uh, Robert Wilson, our very own, put through the Terry McMagic out there. Terry McMagic. I mean, I don't know. He's trying to find the tie-in yeah. with Fitzmagic. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. like it. Okay. All right. You don't have <laughs> to like it. But I do it. like Ryan Fitzpatrick being on the Washington football team for Terry McLaurin and my champion, Antonio Gibson. Who is Ryan Fitzpatrick going to be mentoring this year? Is the question. Will it be Taylor Heineke? Yeah, I think it will be. I I know that the, the that's going to matter to me on that whole because you don't want to do the dance again. You don't uh, yeah. want to go through the Ryan Fitzpatrick. All the options are great. Oh boy, let's go. Oh no, half the season's over and your players are now yeah getting exactly. to it. If if all oh, of a sudden man. Mac Jones falls to them, they decide to take a quarterback in the first round, exactly. something like that. That will be annoying. I would much rather be uh, Taylor Heineke because I I think that will be a 16 game season, um, probably a 15 game season. He'll be benched at one for one game. He'll throw five <laughs> first quarter touchdowns. Be benched. He'll be back the next week. But um, interceptions, I think you mean. Yeah, what I say touchdowns? touchdowns. Well, both will you, happen. You, you don't just get different games. But you don't get benched usually for five first quarter touchdowns. I mean, maybe you're so far ahead. But <laughs> the yeah. hard part is, is Fitzpatrick <laughs> seems to provide excitement for fantasy players, excitement sometimes in the NFL, but the team is so solid defensively. And you add this 38-year-old quarterback that takes chances and drives the ball down the field, but you were you made the playoffs on defense alone last year. And so he's not necessarily game manager Ryan Fitzpatrick. He is more some you know roll the dice type of player in the NFL. I, I would argue that the Dolphins would have made the playoffs. They were a def their defense was fantastic last year, and he played very well with them. Um, I think he can do it. Um, I do too. The question is going to be more about what does Dak do to the Cowboys, and does he is he more the problem for making the playoffs for the I, Washington? Football I would team? still give Washington the edge. Washington is my favorite. Uh, NFC East, and team. NFC East team right now. I am. I wonder how many how many times has Ryan Fitzpatrick made the playoffs? That is Ooh, a that's question. a great I question. Buffalo, no, no. Tennessee, Houston, the Jets, Bucks, Miami. I'm not sure it's I been more than twice, once or twice. I know he made it I'll with the it. Jets that first that one huge year when he supplied Decker and Brandon Marshall big numbers. But I that might be the. I don't know. I'm not gonna say only time, but I'm curious. Andy Dalton. Is is Yay. that worse? Is that worse than signing nobody? So is is he worse than Nick Foles? Is what you're saying? Yeah, they paid Nick Foles twenty million guaranteed last off season. 
when they could have signed Andy Dalton. And now they sign Andy Dalton this offseason instead of trading for another quarterback. I I don't see any playoffs on yeah, I'm not Ryan finding Fitzpatrick. Yeah, he record. might not have even made it. They see it. I don't think he's ever been to the playoffs. How is that possible? I feel like it's insulting that I point that out. Like I feel like people are so in love with him, but and they don't understand why everybody hasn't always kept him. But if you've been in the league since 2009, no, he uh, and you've never made the playoffs. He has one winning season uh, when he was 10 and six with the Jets. Technically, he had a winning season with Miami because he was he was a uh, four and three. It's a long career though. That is a very long career to have a lot of losses. He came into the league in 2005. <laughs> He's still in the league and hasn't accidentally Whatever, made the playoffs. Whatever, man. He's awesome. Yeah, I don't know. I said 2009 because that's as far as our website shows career stats. That's a long, long time. We like watching him play football. Yeah, that's that's it. And we like what he does to other offensive weapons. Yeah, because he doesn't Think about Devontae care. Parker yes. with and without – Fitz magic. Think about him on that Tampa team. So how let's get practical for listeners. Okay. Terry McLaurin, how much of your hype around Ryan Fitzpatrick will translate to moving him up in your rankings? Because I, people we had a, we had dynasty talks about Terry McLaurin like two weeks ago. And it was C D Lamb and Terry McLaurin. You know, there so there's this part where you're like, Oh, I don't know who the quarterback is, and you still don't know the future quarterback for Washington, but how do you feel about McLaurin this year value-wise? Mc, yeah. McLaurin will be a top 24 wide receiver. Uh, I, I don't know if I'll go top 20 right now. I, we haven't done our projections yet for the ultimate draft kit. It's just more about you know you, you've you bought yourself a year with Terry McLaurin where he's in the – McLaurin is in quarterback purgatory. If Washington goes into the season with Taylor Heineke as the starting quarterback, you are you have very little confidence – that McLaurin is going to be any sort of weekly reliable fantasy player for you. Uh, so it, it's more just about that. You're like, okay, we have a year. Let's see if Washington can figure out the longer-term solution. But in the meantime, McLaurin is going to be really, really fun to watch, and he's going to be great for your fantasy team. All right. Anything to add there, Jason? Nope. We didn't talk about Andy Dalton. Is that all right? Uh, that's, that's probably... fine. I think the only thing we can throw in is that the uh, the Bears Super Bowl odds when they signed Andy Dalton went from forty to one to fifty to one. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I think that's the first time anyone's <laughs> ever signed a quarterback and had their Super Bowl oh, odds subtraction by addition. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is it's painful right now. Is Andy Dalton the best quarterback that Robinson could ever play with? That, that he has yes. ever played with. If he yes, one hundred percent. Just confounding you guys realize now he has not signed his franchise tender nor will he anytime soon right correct you realize andy dalton and cam newton were in the same draft class number one pick Wait, in, really? in the, in in the second, second round? rounder yeah makes sense so that means that aj green was also that draft class too that it does if bill belichick could uh he'd prefer cam newton over andy dalton as a starter what would you prefer right now if i had the patriots team i would prefer cam newton okay Corey Davis was signed by the Jets. Three-year, $37 million contract. Feels right. Uh, Corey Davis. Mims. What, what, Who's where the are, one there? Is it Corey Davis because of the yes, money? Yes. Right now in this stage of his career, he'll he'll have that role. Yeah. He, which is maybe not a good role. That's where I was going to say. He has, like, he's probably the de facto number one for fantasy purposes. And, and Jets fandom, you need to hope that Denzel Mims becomes the number one. Corey Davis is, is not a number one wide receiver. He's a good player. He is a good number two wide receiver. But we, I, I feel like you, you have enough evidence to say Corey Davis can't hold that, that down. Like he can't take that, the, that from the defense. But Mims, has, Mims has at least has the physical traits, and we've seen a couple flashes that maybe Mims can be coming number one. He was a second round. If pick. it's Josh, if it's Josh Fields, which it, it very well, Justin, uh, Justin, Justin Fields. Sorry, uh, it should be. And Jamison Crowder is still there, and Corey Davis and Denzel Mims. And you know, I remember last off season we talked about the fact that very rarely, very low percentage uh, of the time a rookie quarterback sustains top thirty six right wide receivers 
Are you in on anybody? No, not really, because you're gonna have a you're gonna have three. So this is a good situation for a rookie to come into. I think whether it's whether it is Justin Fields or whether it's Zach Wilson. I've seen more people uh, saying Zach Wilson will go there um, recently. It's a good situation because you have three solid wide receivers in in Mims, Crowder, and and um, Corey Davis. Now, if I had to pick one of those, I would pick Mims because I'm you're 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 hoping we know what we have in the other guys, and they're they're meh. And that's not who I want on my fantasy roster. I want the potential breakout. But I would agree with you that there will be a new rookie here. And they don't support a ton of, you know, wide receiver value. So I'm going to be out on everybody. Not with all those targets Chris Herndon demands in the yeah, offense. Yeah, Herndon, baby. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Marvin Jones was signed to a two-year, $14 million contract by Jacksonville. You now have presently DJ Chark, LaVisca Chenault, Marvin Jones and uh, Philip Dorsett. Philip Dorsett added. That's not. I don't know bad, how much I care about that. That's but. really not a bad receiving court. Actually, reminds me a lot of the Jets in the sense that there's no true number one, but there's really quality pieces. The Colts re-signed Marlon Mack to a one-year deal. Jason, you said that you believed Indianapolis would re-sign Marlon Mack. Yeah, I do. It will be really. Uh, educational i think this year to see That's this, like, okay i this, like it this like injury it. he's coming back from an achilles injury which running backs do not come back from they just haven't there uh, and and mike and i've been talking in the in the studio mike is on the side of like he's out on marlon mack marlon mack is done because running backs don't come back from this injury he could very well be right because they haven't um but it's also a very small sample size of young mm -hmm. running backs that are injured to come back it did take Deonta Foreman a long time. He's like the only Took other young three example. Years. Basically three years. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I don't Didn't think Didn't Arian this... Foster come back in Miami to, from that injury? He, or did he sustain he, the injury in Miami? No, he, he had it happen in Houston. Then he was back just for like two or three games and then retired. Yep. Okay. Um, so he never actually came back. I, but everybody, what people are wanting to know is, let, let's say he's moderately healthy, right? He's He's there. He's... Maybe not the same exact Marlon Mack, but he is active. He's ready for training camp. He's a part of the rotation. What does this do for Jonathan Williams? I saw so many people crying on their timeline. What about like, Jonathan Taylor, though? The, him too. Jonathan Taylor. Well, Jonathan Williams is probably out. Great, yeah, greater sign <laughs> for the Colts. We're doing real well. Um, I, you know, I he don't at least think, was a Colt for a second. Yeah, he was. I have thought that Marlon Mack is coming back this whole time. And I have not been scared of Marlon Mack with no. with Jonathan Taylor. I think Jonathan Taylor's going to be what he pretty much was to close the season. At. Yeah, I've, Jonathan Taylor's going to be a better quarterback, or I mean, a better running back when they <laughs> they're not doing well today. Oh, yeah. What is going on? He's going to be a better running back when they're winning football games than when they're losing. Um, Naeem Hines still under contract, and what is Carson Wentz, and what is this offense? So. Uh, very few running backs that I think people would be more excited to have on the roster than Jonathan Taylor, and I don't think Marlon Mack coming back off an Achilles hurts it. I yep. agree with you. He I'm, is the backup. At the very yes. least, Marlon Mack is coming in, and he is the backup to Jonathan Taylor without It's a one-year deal. Yeah, this is just kind of like try to regain some value before you go back out on the market because mm -hmm. he's still very young. And they still have Jordan Wilkins. And yeah. according to their GM, he's Do saying – yeah. yeah, he's the a GM was The GM was saying, I envision a really special backfield when you have – Jonathan Taylor, Naeem Hines, uh, Marlon Mack, Marla Mack and, and Jordan Wilkins, and, uh, to which every fantasy manager puked. <laughs> All right, here's a, here's a signing that really does matter to me. The yes. Lions have signed Jamal Williams, formerly of the Packers, two-year, $7.5 million contract. Um, everyone wants DeAndre Swift to be locked and loaded, but Jamal Williams is a great pass protector. He's a yes. great pass catcher. Yes. And he has a level of... I think ferocity to his game that matches Dan Campbell and what this team wants to do. Yes. Yeah. Jamal Williams, uh, number one, Jamal Williams, super awesome dude. Like if yeah. you haven't watched the interviews of Jamal Williams, he seems like a delightful human, very joyful. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy that he got a team. I'm, I was kind of hoping that he would like maybe go to Seattle because him on the Seahawks would have been pretty fun. But this, this is a situation for Swift. Not that Swift is the starter. That okay, that's fine. Jamal Williams is the backup, but Jamal Williams is a good backup and a backup that, like you were saying, Andy, will take passing work away from Swift. 
And the passing work, that's what changes things. That is the difference maker for a starting running back jumping into the top tier of fantasy football and just being a good fantasy football running back. That's true in general. And now if you add it to the specific situation of DeAndre Swift, it is the specific thing that gives him fantasy relevance is his pass catching work for a team that you don't expect to score a ton of touchdowns. So this is And to be losing a lot. Right. So this is uh yeah, very unfortunate for DeAndre Swift. Uh, I and I don't know if this team's going to come into the season declaring Jamal Williams the backup as much as a compliment, as much as a part sure. of a rotation. Like Jamal may have real fantasy value relative to his undrafted status or late round status that goes under the radar depend if they're willing to invest this money. I, I, I agree. Emmanuel Sanders was released and now signed by the Buffalo Bills. John Brown, replacement. Yeah. I mean, it's... Well, and, and it's great because Gabriel Davis hype existed for six days. I was offered Gabe Davis and literally, <laughs> literally told the guy, I said... I, I'm interested in Gabe Davis, but they could just add a veteran. And a day later, they add Emmanuel Sanders, and it feels very, very similar to John Brown. Yeah, and I, I don't necessarily care about Emmanuel Sanders, but I actually really like this for, for Josh Allen. Mm -hmm. I, I think that yes. this is you know, a, a solid veteran wide receiver that's just going to help out. But John Brown, he, he signed a deal too. Oh, good for smoke. With the Raiders. They love fast guys. They also re-signed so, Zay Jones. Eh, man. It's a one-year deal for John Brown, and John Brown is now the best wide receiver on the Raiders. Yes, 100%. <laughs> like, he, he could, he could end up being Nelson. How crazy is that? He could end up being Nelson Aguilar from last year, who, yes. was, who was very relevant for fantasy, caught a ton of deep balls, and had big weeks. I, I think that's going to be what John Brown is. The Sneaky. Op the opportunity here for... Brian Edwards and, and Henry Ruggs, I mean, like, come on, guys. I, yeah. I don't think it happens. I would still put my chips on a Henry Ruggs trying to break out than I would probably John Brown in the veteran situation. Okay. And I would put all of my chips into Darren Waller's pockets and say, <laughs> Oh, my God. Take, <laughs> take all my targets. Seriously. And here's an extra one for the road. Yeah, you're, you're right. <laughs> Darren Waller rides again. Yes. Um. Anthony Ferkser re-signed to a one-year deal. He is the tight end to roster right now Yeah, in Tennessee. Yeah, he's... I'm telling you, Ryan Tannehill really, really likes throwing him the football. He really does. He out-targeted him the second half of the year. Out -targeted Week five on, he out-targeted him. But he... Is out targeted he... Johnny Smith, that is. For yes, those out okay. there. Johnny yeah, but... Smith's going to get the bag. One-year deal for Anthony Ferkser. More targets, receptions, and yards than Jonu Smith from and week five. People are excited for Ferkser. He is not going to be in my sleeper list. He is not in my sleeper list. I can't take it. Is it because he's not on your dynasty roster? Because Adam Troutman has done nothing, and Ferkser has done something. How is he not on your list? He deserves a spot on your list. What has Ferkser done? Ferkser has had... Lots of fantasy relevant games before. You need to go and look what Anthony Ferkser actually six. did. Yeah, he was the number tight one tight end. Eight one. for 113. Five for 51. All right, that's it. Four for 45. Yes. Read me uh, Adam Troutman's career. Oh, well, because Adam oh. Troutman was a rookie. Fight, fight, <laughs> fight, fight, fight. Yes, I apologize that the rookie tight end who was the backup has done nothing yet. I will make you a water bet today between Troutman? Anthony Ferkser yeah, and, oh, yeah. And Troutman. Oh, yeah. Water bet. I know I'm going to win that one. Joke is on you because who likes water? The trout. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jason. Does I that mean that I wasn't you're following. getting watered that, for? Nope. Yes, it, it does. The, tr the trout nope. man's getting watered. Nope. I cannot wait for them to sign another tight end any day now. They have no money. Yeah, that does not matter. All right, the Giants you talked about, they signed John Ross. They signed Devontae Booker. They aren't needing to sign somebody more exciting. I'm sorry. That's yeah, he, not going to get it done. No, but for real NFL, Devontae Booker as your backup to uh, take, take one. one. That's, that's, that's a solid move. Honestly, if, the, if these guys are involved in special teams, they, these could be good real NFL moves mm -hmm. for the, the Giants. Yep. The Chiefs re-signed Darrell Williams and released Damian Williams. You were right, Andy. Yeah, so Darrell is the uh, – the backup. 
Yep, and I honestly believe this was, for fantasy for Clyde Edwards-Alaire, this was the best case scenario. We knew one of them was coming back. Uh, well, both of them coming back would have been brutal because you have a, a huge amount of variables. But Daryl Williams is he's a fine player. He's a fine role player. They like but, him. and they like it. But he doesn't have Daryl Williams does not have the pass catching chops of Clyde Edwards Alaire or, or of of Damian. So the the fact that Clyde won't have to compete for that that is exciting. And yeah. they and they just signed uh I can't his name is escaping me. But they they paid all the money for the guard. So I'm, I'm, things don't bail yet on Clyde Edwards Alaire. I agree. I wouldn't bail on him, but I am curious what they do around the goal line because I know you guys talked about that with Damian Williams, but but Daryl's still bigger than Clyde is. And, yes, and they just they trust him and they trusted him in the playoffs. They had the injuries with Clyde. It could be a little bit one two punchy there, and we'll see. They still have Darwin under contract, right? Darwin? I'm just I'm just bringing yeah, him up because yeah. they, he's he should still be there. Yes. Well, because if Lev Bell's leaving and you know Damian's gone, somebody else is going to be. They always have like three guys there. So, um, Tyrod Taylor was signed to a one year deal. Jacoby Brissett one year deal. Tyrod with the Texans. Jacoby mm -hmm. with the Dolphins. I okay. Be I believe those. I I want to say Tyrod's was twelve million. It's up to. Okay, up to twelve. Because I was like, I. The, it's it's team choice. Right. Well, that's, <laughs> the thing about a lot of these contracts, when you when you see them, you're seeing the up to number, not the actual guarantee. NFL contracts, the guarantee is what matters. Um, Robert Tunyon was tendered at a second round level. He should stay on the Packers. Yeah, he will. That's great news. Uh, you've got the Colts throwing out a second round tender on Moali Cox. Yeah. So, so that's I mean he, he flashed. <laughs> he flashed last year at, at several he junctures. Did. And putting a second-round tender on a guy that they're ensuring that no one's going to take Molly Cox away. Trey Burton is gone. Jack Doyle is baby hands Jack Doyle. Still on the roster. They could If, if they need to, they can cut Jack Doyle to uh, save a, a good amount of cap space. But I, I, I would imagine at this point they'll No, run. I think they'll keep him. But. Yeah, they would only cut him to – Sign Zach Ertz after he's released. Something oh. like that. Some offensive line moves. They really, really matter in the offseason. Trent Williams, dominant left tackle, now the highest paid in history by $10,000. Do you know <laughs> you, you know that? <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. Boxieri came out and said, petty AF. Because <laughs> he, he outpaced him by $10,000. It's um, exactly what I would do. Oh, it's certainly what you would do. Yeah, and then um, in so a, so Trent Williams is going back to San Francisco on a huge deal. Yeah, and in addition to that, the 49ers agreed to terms with center Alex Mack. He is not what he once was, which is the one of, if not the best center in the league. But he's he's a good, solid veteran center. So the offensive line. And he for, also knows Kyle Shanahan's system. He has played he, several times with Shanahan. Three different cities now, right? He played with him, I think, in Cleveland, Cleveland Atlanta, yes. and now San Francisco. That is correct. Rodney Hudson traded to Arizona. <laughs> yeah. Oh, baby. I, I wasn't planning on pushing. You want the button? I do. Oh, yeah. You've, nobody's ever been as hyped for a center as for, Jason for, for Rodney Hudson. For a 31-year-old center. Jason's oh, like all in to Rodney Hudson. I am. He's going to change things. It's going to be great. Having a great center is important. 49ers added Alex Mack. We've uh, it's it's been a probably a few years since we really highlighted, but we have gone through some of the statistical differences for a running game based upon the center position. It is massive. Yes. So all the uh, runs Cliff Kingsbury kept calling straight up the middle that never worked with a terrible center um, actually could be successful this year for whoever the running back is for the Arizona Cardinals. And and, and the Chargers have really improved their offensive line. They signed the best center on the market, Corey Lindsley. Uh, formerly of the Packers, and then uh, Matt Filer uh, coming over from the Steelers as well added, who's guard tackle. This was the worst offensive line in football last year, mm -hmm. and they needed to do some things to protect their young quarterback. And Austin Eckler should be able to do some massive work behind that behind that line. Matt Ryan's contract has been restructured. Yet again. This this is very interesting to me because they cleared cap space for this year, which they were in need of, and that makes sense. But prior to this restructure, 
pretty much every draft mock draft I had seen, or at least half of them, had the Falcons getting a quarterback of the future. They, you know, it's not often you have a top five pick and they have it. They've got the number four pick, and to be able to, you know, grab a gr good young quarterback is great. But now this move means that Matt Ryan's contract not only is is massive this year, and, and they paid him; he's not going anywhere. But next year, next year his cap hit would be forty eight point six million. Like that's that's a, not a, uh, okay. You you don't <laughs> cut you don't cut him next year and have that dead cap. So that means to me that. If I were m managing the Falcons, I'm looking at Matt. I'm saying, okay, we've got a window to win with this team. You know, I, I did not believe this was the route they were going to go. I thought they were going to get a, a quarterback and kind of implode and rebuild. Um, kind of important for Calvin Ridley. Yeah, very important. To know for what to expect. You talk about buying years of guaranteed production from a player with Fitzpatrick for McLaurin for a year. They could just go the Packers route, though. And have the so quarterback, they could take wait a quarterback for multiple there and then, years. Yeah. Okay. I I like it. I I did not like the uh, the move. Thinking of the move for the Falcons for them to move on from Matt Ryan. I think Matt Ryan has several years left, and I think that Matt Ryan is a top tier quarterback in the NFL. Trey Lance, if he went there, no. I know you don't like Trey Lance, but no. my point is, he is exceptionally raw. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he's not. If you need a quarterback to sit for two years behind a Matt Ryan, that's the type that you would grab. Yeah, I mean, no teams, zero, want to rebuild in terms of head coaching staff, what they put on the field week to week. You even see the moves that Detroit's making, like them, hate them, whatever. You look at these as long-term projects, but this this league, this game, it, the ball bounces yes. your way on in three games, and all of a sudden you're Washington making the playoffs when no one expected you to make the playoffs. Right, but but that's the – it speaks to like the insanity of Seattle actually trading Russell Wilson. It, it how crazy it will be. May I don't know if the Texans are going to trade Watson or not. I mean that that's its own situation. But just thinking of the actual team trading away a franchise quarterback, it's so I and not that Deshaun Matt Ryan is Deshaun Watson, especially for for long term, but. Quarterbacks, franchise quarterbacks are insanely difficult to find. We have 32 teams in the NFL. How many franchise quarterbacks actually exist? Well, it's what makes Ryan Fitzpatrick's journey so hilarious in some ways. Right. Because you have teams that have struggled to find quarterbacks for years. and years. Go back and look at, the, look at the Bears quarterbacks since Rex Grossman got them to the, the Super Bowl. And by Rex Grossman, of course, I the mean defense. Brian Urlacher. And, and, uh, and Hester. <laughs> yeah. But if you, go, if you go look at that laundry list of just mediocrity, and then play, even this year when Bears fans see Ryan Fitzpatrick signed for the same money as Andy Dalton, like it just makes it – I know he hasn't made the playoffs, but it just makes it kind of crazy. Like Houston for years struggled with mediocrity. Yeah. Let Ryan like, Fitzpatrick like go. Cleveland before Baker – like Baker looks like he could be a franchise guy. Before that, though, I mean, how many? Like, you you always see the photo of uh, the Browns fan with with the jersey and it's just every single quarterback's I name. Know. So it's just you have Matt Ryan. Why would you get rid of him? It's hard to play quarterback. Yes, that's what I think it is. So, oh, did you see this? I'm going to talk about this, Jason, because we're about to close the show out. Oh, Brother. The NFL execs have been in active discussions with potential partners to develop a digital collectible and NFT strategy. So for those of you out there in the NBA Top Shot yeah. NFT universe. Let's go. Um, the NFL is going to figure of it out. Of course they are. Well, you see, Mike, it'll make them money. Yes, that's why of course they are. Well, that's exciting. And oh. it will be fun. I um, mean, you know. You want to hook us up. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> That'd be fun. Yeah, be NFL, fun. if you need a need a, a partner. Yeah. The only thing that would bring me joy about this situation, like if they roll out a nice NFT product for the NFL licensed moments mm -hmm. type of thing, is the thought of Mike spending his money on Adam Troutman moments. I mean, those <laughs> are going to be very, Oh, they're going to be worth a lot. Very special. All right, that'll do it for the show. More free agent updates coming next week. Lots of projections. Lots of arguments. It'll be fun. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. 
Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.